the alternative music scene of San Francisco, this is considered a normal night, then this a normal crowd. The club is Cat's Alley, the music is punk, and the band is loaded. They seem remarkably aptly named. We've come here tonight with the major participants from something called Virtual Radio. They were scouting for new groups to put up on their website, and they seem to actually be enjoying the music, which might mean that pretty soon, maybe about the same time our hearing comes back, we can look forward to getting loaded right on our home computers when they bring their music to life on the Internet. In a network of computers, it's not the MIPS and chips and whatnot that's most important. It's what goes on between the people using them that makes them really powerful. A reminder from Sun Microsystems, proud to support this PBS program. Hello, I'm Scott Simon. Now, this is where many of us come when we want to find some new music. But in the future, you may simply log on to your computer. Now, I may not be the first person to tell you that your computer is becoming your stereo, but you may not know that it's also becoming your radio and even your radio station. Broadcasting as we know it is about to be turned on its ear again. Today, anyone with a computer and the right hardware can become a DJ or a VJ. Language and music from all over the world are pouring into cyberspace. And radio is coming into a whole new life on the Internet. Now we're going to go and hit these one over here, and then we'll go back to the other building and see on the other side. See this building over here? That's the administrative building. There's a little walkway and a picnic area. We'll hit the picnic area and then go into the building. Foothill College in the San Francisco Bay Area is in the process of being swarmed. The senior management from Virtual Radio are promoting the bands that appear on their website by handing out flyers and stickers and handbills. And no one is immune to the enthusiasm of programmer and promoter Eric Sugg. I'm Virtual Radio. we got a worldwide website out on the internet. and You can go up and hear all kinds of bands from Foothill College, local bands, dial it up. Here, uh, that's a guy wearing a goggle, and it says on the back that if you listen to Virtual Radio, it won't make you blind, and we're just showing you what it won't happen. And here's a sticker from Little Sister. What Mr. Sugg and his partner Brent Marcus are doing here, on some time off from their day jobs in Silicon Valley, is promoting a couple of the groups who have signed up with Virtual Radio. It's part music store, part radio station, part promotional vehicle where anyone with access to the World Wide Web can come and sample the sounds of music, all kinds of music from bands and singers. Like Loaded, who for some reason or another have yet to be signed to a big recording contract. All right, we got this one. There are a host of musical sites claiming space on the internet. There are music libraries, established sites for pop stars, sites for all the top bands. But Virtual Radio specializes in the relatively unknown, a sort of internet musical orphanage. So if you're not exactly a top band yet and you're looking for exposure, Eric Sugg is looking for you. Well, what we do is we offer you the ability to be exposed to the world 24 hours a day with your music in four, three different formats so you're not limiting your audience by your platform. A lot of people in Asia don't have Macintoshes that are fully blown systems. They have the older type computers. So we support you like that. We actually create stickers and send them to you to pass out at your concerts with our URL on it. We attend your concert and give you hype, take photos, make videos for you. We become a promoting company. We start going out onto the internet news groups and actually posting into the cities that you're about to concert in and go and say, hey, the gutter sluts are coming. <laughs> There's a big band coming to your town. Check them out on virtual radio first. And all these different services could be done by these larger companies, but they're more interested. Okay, we've got your band, we've got your money, let's put you on. It's over. You know, your prints, you're going to make enough money anyway. We're trying to show them a different way of doing it and giving them 
more ammo to take to that big label and say, hey, look, 10,000 people listen to me out of El Paso, Texas. They love me. <laughs> By going to virtual radio, you can download sample tracks from various bands, check out their schedules and club dates, get biographies, and of course, have the chance to buy their CDs and T-shirts. For the bands, this is a well-maintained and established site where they get to compete with the big names of popular music by getting their individual sounds out on the internet. You can put up Green Day, and yeah, a lot of people are gonna wanna come to your site and listen to it, because Green Day's a really big band, but we get more respect and more loyalty from our fans by putting up these obscure bands, going and picking heavy metal polka. There's a lot of heavy metal polka people that don't have a site to go to. Well, we're that site. And so now people like us more because we went and helped out these kind of people. They're more willing to come to us and see what else we do. Heavy metal. Heavy metal, metal polka. polka. That's Brave Combo. Yeah, Brave Combo. They're actually a band out of uh, uh, Texas, and they redo old uh, 40 songs into polka fashion with electric guitar. Like Hava Nagila. <laughs> <laughs> twist. Right. The Hava Nagila That's right. Twist. That's it's right. a great song. There are about 60 different bands paying a dollar a day to be on virtual radio, and not all of them were discovered in the trendy clubs of San Francisco. In fact, some come from almost abnormally ordinary places, like this quiet street in Halifax, Nova Scotia, where Fire Rooster, the first Canadian band to appear on virtual radio, has a recording studio in the attic. On the wall above my bed To remind me of what a fool I've been No sense in dreaming that you'll be back again Bruce Nelson is one of the founding musicians of Fire Rooster. What the mainstream hears is what the major labels want them to hear, which is where their budgets are. And uh, as, an, as an artist on the internet, you can, make, you can get to people that you might have never, you know, doors you've never knocked on ever before or would never be able to. So people are making their own choices. They're not, I don't think they're, uh, as, if they're open-minded people and if they are looking at the music on the internet, they're not swayed by hype, uh, which is, which really isn't a big part of the music industry. Uh, <laughs> so they're not swayed by that. They're swayed by their personal choices. And if they like something, they like it. Not because someone's telling them they like it or not because some radio station is shoving it down their throat 15 times a day or some video network's playing it a lot. You're making your own choices. And I think that's kind of good for people and humans in, in general to make their own choices. In Japan, we have the Blue Hearts, which is thought to be one of the greatest alternative bands more for the people that are in the high-tech zone, people that were in the 80s just getting out of college or just going into college, they're the ones that are really on the net right now, and their type of music is what we've tried to focus on. We spent a lot of time trying to have difference between each country, find something from here, find something from there, but uh, as with Fire Rooster, they're a very hungry band. They're always out there, they're always in concert, they're always writing us emails, telling us what they're doing, and that's the kind of bands that have a chance in right. this. Fire Rooster has actually gone one better than just putting up audio tracks and club dates. They've produced their own music video, and although it hasn't yet made it to MTV, you can download it from Virtual Radio. Virtual Radio. Okay, as you dial in uh, to the front page here, we've got our uh, glorious logo. And as you scroll down a bit here past our, our sponsor, uh, you get a list of all the bands right here on our homepage. And uh, Fire Rooster would be the second in this middle group. As you click on there, it goes to a short description about the band. We've also got a video from Fire Rooster available. Uh, and at the bottom... Uh, the bands and musicians who are on virtual radio are more than just a geek chorus. Their stops on an eclectic digital music sampler, a place where you can check out the trends and keep tabs on what's going on in the alternative music scene. And follow your favorite groups, perhaps the Gutter Sluts. Well, the Gutter Sluts are a very, very uh, famous band in the Silicon Valley. Basically, all the nerds that work at Apple and Intel and IBM, we all listened to this band. It was a really funny band. They actually came about as a joke at Foothill College. Well, when I was working with virtual radio, I realized that I needed some kind of schlock pop, all-female band to put up there for all these different type of uh, 
people we were listening on the virtual radio. So I said, we'll take this old tape and stick it on there. And sure enough, around 6,000 people within the first two weeks checked it out. Just the sample, they were starting to check it out because I told a, told a couple of bands that we were looking at it and Gutter Sluts were online. And we told them about the 6,000 people. They wrote a Christmas song because it was close to Christmas and said, we'll see if this one gets anywhere. Again, around 6,000, actually around 12,000 listened to the sample, and over six took the whole song down. And I said, you've got something here. Let me just get this right. Uh, Gutter Sluts has a Christmas album? Yeah. <laughs> the Gutter Sluts Christmas song, that was a special song that they wrote only for their family, but they gave it a chance on virtual radio, and now they're famous. <laughs> when he's not promoting the careers of groups like the Gutter Sluts, Sprint Marcus spends his days as a consultant in accounting software. But all his evenings and all his spare time, it appears, are spent on virtual radio. It's part of his job to figure out if they can actually make any money doing this. I feel if we can work with 300 bands uh, at the dollar a day, uh, have our front page sponsor, um, have about 50 other additional sponsors, we have a section called Free Trade Zone, so that uh, they can uh, advertise uh, you know, clubs, uh, music-related uh, people would be, you know, obvious people there. Uh, in addition, we've uh, uh, now trying to move into other uh, 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 markets, other uh, concepts. Uh, the video, we believe, is going to distinguish ourselves from the competition. With thought that now, uh, internet and sound and graphics and videos, we're now ready to produce a CD-ROM, the ultimate in multimedia. Uh, so we have some plans this year to go ahead and do some full-length uh, CD-ROMs for individual bands um, and uh, promote them that way and, and make some income that way. For Fire Rooster, one of the more established bands on the system, money wasn't the major reason for going on virtual radio. They were concerned with getting reaction, and they have not been disappointed. Tremendous. I mean, if, if you were a large, you know, if, if you were doing really well and you're, and you're very famous, it, it would eat, probably be even more gratifying because you don't reach your audience like that on a one-to-one -one person. But uh, even as an indie artist, not really, you know, selling very many records and not being, you know, very much noticed, it's still really neat that someone's noticing you. Sometimes you feel that everyone is ignoring your music because uh, <laughs> there's just so much music out there. At the Cat's Alley, Loaded is about to finish their set. <laughs> Eric thinks this band would make an interesting addition to virtual radio, and he steps up to give them his best pitch. Hey, that was a hell of a show, man. What's your name? Diamond. Diamond. My name's Eric Stuck. I'm on virtual radio, dude. We got a web oh, show, you guys, man. You guys are, we're filming this show. Right, we got a website and we do uh, promotions over the internet, put music up, put pictures of your bands, your concert dates, and we'll give you a chance to get a little exposure if you're really into it, man. I love I all virtual radio yeah, bands. Absolutely. If they got a dollar, I'm gonna holler. No. Uh, actually, all the bands, I like the music because I like all types of music, but what I like is a band that has the drive. If they're gonna just record the toilet flushing for an hour, that's okay, but do they wanna play it every day? Do they wanna show it? Do they wanna to try to get out there and produce their music? Because everybody has a right to perform what they want. It's just, I don't like people that don't try. I wanna see someone that works. I'm a workaholic. I mean, yes, Brent, I'm all over them. I'm calling them up two in the morning now. Are, you don't have to sleep right now, do you? <laughs> but uh, when I see the want and the hunger in a band's eyes, then that's what makes me like them, no matter what they're doing on the screen. If their song's a little yeah. weird uh, or they're saying some things that are subversive, I like them if they got the, the want to win. Virtual radio has become a whole new way for unknown bands to have access to the internet population, but there's still the problem of downloading the material you want to sample. Downloading music tracks to your computer has a normal ratio time of five to one. So to hear a four-minute song by Fire Rooster would take 20 minutes of computer time to get it into your system. But that's about to change. Downloading is going the way of the long playing record. We're about to break the sound barrier in cyberspace. The old one pitch on the way to Edgar Martinez. Swung on the line down the left field line for a base hit. Here comes Joy. Here is Junior to third base. They're going to wave him in. The throw to the plate will be late. The Mariners are going to play for the American League Championship.
When the Seattle Mariners calmly celebrated getting into the American League Championships in 1995, they were making more history than they knew, because apart from every other statistic that made the local record books, they became the first team to have a game broadcast live over the Internet, using a piece of digital software called Real Audio, which is revolutionizing sound on the net. From their offices on Pioneer Square in downtown Seattle, Progressive Networks has been perfecting the technology to download sound at real time, not at the usual five to one ratio. It's the brainchild of former Microsoft executive, Rob Glazer. Mr. Glazer is a rich guy. He's made enough money to own part of the Seattle Mariners baseball team, which explains why the game made it to the net, and still had enough money left over to help develop the technology to give us real-time sound on the net. What real audio does is compress audio signals so that we can actually listen to them as we download from all kinds of sources. That amazingly simple concept really means that we can effectively use our computers as radios. Radios with memory. There are sort of two kinds of real audio programs. There's live programming where the notion of fast forwarding, unless you have a time machine, uh, isn't really that meaningful. Uh, but there, the, most of the, the content that's out there, even if it's put up live, is actually then sitting there for you to have on-demand access to. So it's just like a VCR or a CD player where you can pick the part that you want. Uh, and that enables all kinds of great stuff because part of the, the, uh, the producer's role uh, isn't just to put material up, but to hyperlink it in ways and to catalog it and index it. Uh, a lot of the national public radio content we have, we take what they call the cut sheets, the, uh, the outlines that they give the news directors uh, of the various member national public radio stations, uh, and they, we actually put that up on the Internet. So you are essentially playing the same role as the news director. You pick the story you want to hear, and so in a two-hour All Things Considered program, there might be 15 different stories. You pick the one or two that you're interested in, and you get those immediately without having to, to wait through the story about Barney the dinosaur that you have no interest in. Real audio is a big thing in cyberspace, big enough that in the first six months of operation, 600,000 copies of the free software were downloaded by Internet users around the world. And that's just the start. From ABC News, I'm Tim O'Donnell. The implications are huge, for as the big radio networks like ABC and National Public Radio buy into real audio, the radio programs are available anywhere you have an Internet connection, and they're not the only stations that have signed up. Steve Mack is a sound engineer for Real Audio. What should I say? I'm more standardized. This is Internet Radio Hawaii. And Rabbit, the guy who runs the site, has been a big Real Audio fan ever since the day of release. And he puts together shows of Hawaiian music. And for some reason, Hawaiian music just sounds great in Real Audio. I mean, to just be sitting, especially in Seattle when it's cold, to just listen to these guys singing on, on Internet Radio Hawaii just sort of makes you think that, well, at least somebody's warm somewhere. Uh, the internet has changed uh, from being, certainly when we started the company, uh, something that was uh, kind of viewed as, as kind of a gateway uh, for connectivity to, with the emergence of, uh, of the World Wide Web, to a, a, a very plausible uh, way for information to be shared across networks to, I think generally pe people believe, is the dial tone for the information highway. Uh, so with the developments happening that rapidly, it certainly is, is necessary and, and appropriate for us to move as rapidly as we can. And that's, that's what we've done from a, a technology standpoint. And even more exciting from, from our perspective, that's what people have done in terms of how they've used real audio and the range of people and the amount of creativity that has sort of been engaged by people jumping on the, uh, uh, on the, uh, the, the concept of real audio has been thrilling. I mean, it exceeded our most optimistic expectations, uh, the, both the, uh, the rate at which it's happened and the amount that's happened. The technology that makes real audio work is a major development in the advance of the Internet, not only because it now gives radio broadcasters access to the 40 or 50 million people in the Internet audience, but the reverse of this is that we not only receive signals, we can send them. Real Audio is selling a software package which has the potential to let everyone on the Internet run their own personal radio station. I mean, the impact that that has uh, in terms of democratizing the airwaves, if you will, uh, or, the, or the, the net waves is, is tremendous. I mean, it, the impact, uh, you know, there's a lot, a lot of people that, you know, like me when I was in high school that never would have thought that they had the 
the capital resources to go to a radio station, I mean, to go to the FCC and get a, uh, a spectrum allocation or buy a station from an uh, already existing uh, provider that can get access uh, is incredible. I mean, the number of people like the virtual radio folks or the Radio HK folks, I mean, there are so many people that have that have tried, that, that maybe wanted to be radio programmers and nobody ever knew it, and then the internet and real audio come about and they can jump on this phenomenon and get into the netcasting business uh, without uh, having to go to a license uh, bureau and get a license and get spectrum. I mean, that has a tremendously uh, uh, democratizing and uh, you know, effective of, of adding pluralism to an environment where there are all kinds of forces that, that strip away pluralism through uh, more and more central consolidation of the media. So that's, uh, that's a thrill to, to play a role in catalyzing that. Uh, this is Dr. Chester Sandy, do you have a call? Yeah, now we're going to Darth Vader. Yeah, then... Glazer, spending his working days in the radio business actually brings him back. For it was radio, he claims, that was his first real love. Actually, when I was in high school, I started a, 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 a wired radio station. Uh, and actually, I didn't even think of the connection between that and real audio until about six months ago. Uh, I just always was interested in media, and uh, we on a, had a campus where we there, there had been a radio station there years before, and it had fallen into disuse. Uh, so with some friends, I uh, got uh, uh, the, together the, the proposal to get the school to spend a little money, and rather than going and get a, a low, uh, low wattage license, we just wired the, the campus that wired the gymnasium and the lunchroom and a few of the other rooms and did intercom broadcasting. Uh, and it's amazing how, you know, 20 years later, I'm doing the same thing. All types of people are finding ways to use real audio. Dixon Chan, a student at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, has been using it to keep in touch with the news from home over Hong Kong radio. Uh, usually I listen to the news, the current news, the music, and the weather report, as well as financial report. Weather in Hong Kong today is just 27 degrees Celsius, and a bit of, maybe a bit of precipitation at night time. Just to keep me in touch with the stuff going on in Hong Kong, rather than being isolated from it. Uh, it would make me less homesick and bring the distance of myself to Hong Kong closer than ever. The next step for real audio will, of course, be real video. And that will put a whole new light on the way we deal with television and the internet. And the technology might be closer than you think, for Rob Glazer admits that real video is something they are actively developing. In the meantime, at Virtual Radio, Eric Sugg and his friends have already signed up for real audio and have been working on their own version of live music promotion. Uh, if we want, we could easily hook up, say, four, five, six cameras, no problem, and have them run automated routines. It turns out that Eric has a friend in the apartment building where he lives in Mountain View, California, who's a robotics engineer. And when Eric found out that Mark Badonis was building a small robot to compete in the World Robot Sumo Championships, Eric had a brainwave. Why not put a digital camera on top of the robot to capture live pictures of band performances? So before too long, Mark was enrolled as a member of Virtual Radio. And eventually, they hope, not only will you be able to listen to the Gutter Sluts Christmas song in real time, you'll be able to visit them on the web and possibly see pictures of them in concert. Taking the stage, perhaps, at Cat's Alley. Although the sad news is, you won't be seen loaded. Last time we checked, they still hadn't gotten back to Eric Sugg. Well, that was, uh, Loaded was quite a different experience, but that's a typical of what we do because bands that are performing are, of course, the kind of bands we want on virtual radio. We want ones that are actually out there working and performing at least weekly to get a hold of people. And if I take a, a band like Loaded and, and contact them, maybe just 1% of all the youth in America will really like this band. But when we're talking an audience of 30 to 50 million, that 1% becomes really big. Maybe Loaded got a better offer. Maybe they just lost the phone number. In the meantime, Eric Sugg is still holding a place for them, hoping they can add their own particular talents to the sound of music that will wail through everyone's life on the Internet. A good place to start exploring the world of cyber sounds is here in the World Wide Web at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Now, they've compiled a list of the songs and the people who shaped the world of rock and roll from ABBA all the way to Zappa. 
Now, of course, not all audio is music. There is also a site called Foreign Languages for Travelers. You simply click on the language that you speak, and then you select the language that you'd like to learn. Some of the languages also have audio, so you can practice your pronunciation. Let's try Spanish for hello. Hola. Well, if you'd like to hear the sounds of cyberspace for yourself, remember you'll need some extra helper applications on your computer. We've gathered a collection of them on our own website, together with links to all the sites you've seen on this program. Here's how to find us on the web, http colon slash slash www.pbs.org. Thanks for tuning in, or as they may say one day in the future, thanks for downloading. Until next time, I'm Scott Simon. Hasta la vista. In a network of computers, it's not the MIPS and chips and whatnot that's most important. It's what goes on between the people using them that makes them really powerful. A reminder from Sun Microsystems, proud to support this PBS program.